Greetings, it's Alutations, Geo Nerds. Oh, I've been waiting for this episode like a kid waiting for Christmas morning. Brisbane is an amazing geological town, but what makes it truly unique is the Brisbane Tuff. So let's learn about this amazing rock, its uses, its history, and its future. So come on, you know what I'm going to say. Let's rock. The Brisbane Tuff, what is it? Well, firstly, let's get the pronunciation right. Tuff rhymes with woof. That's it. Got it? Good. I don't want to hear any more Brisbane Tuff. It's Tuff. This rock is a welded inbranite. Geologist Patrick Marshall from New Zealand. Another geological wonderland derived the term imbranite from fiery rock dust cloud, from the Latin igni for fire, as in ignite, igneous, and imbri for rain. So imbranites result from immense explosions. Big, bada big boom, big yeah. boom. Yeah, big bada boom. Bada boom. <laughs> big ba boom, big bada boom. <laughs> pyroclastic ash. There are other types of tuff, but not welded tuff. There is airfall tuff, and we do get that in Brisbane, but this is where the ash has cooled in the air and it falls as a compacted layer, not welded. The Brisbane tuff has airfall tuff in it. In some of the lower sections, just above all the bits and the host rock that uh, build up as it runs through. Tuffs are made of very poorly sorted mixtures of volcanic ash, pumice, bits of rock, small pieces of everything that hit, including trees in places. And these are all ground up together and then turned to stone. Tuff, in my opinion, is one of the most striking building stones used in Brisbane and it's probably the best material to make something out of in this city. It's a rock which is tough, not tough, durable, and it's a stone of great beauty and character. In colour it varies considerably from off-white, pink, purple, green, and the colour seems to be related to the durability, with the best of the pinks, purples and greens being the most durable. The lighter coloured materials a little bit less, but they all have their uses. The Brisbane Tuff occurs almost at the base of the Ipswich Coal Measures and is of early Triassic age, and it overlays the Brisbane Schists like the Narrenly Fernvale beds and the Bunya firelights. At the present time, outcrops can be with reasonable certainty correlated with the tuff and is typically developed under scattered an area of about 56 kilometres by 15 kilometres, with a decided concentration in and about the city of Brisbane, where the principal outcrop takes place in the form of an elongated mass measuring about 20 kilometres long and it heads in a north northeast south southeast direction up towards Aspley down towards Wollongabba. The flow structures indicate that the flow was from the north to south probably from a vent now under the Petrie formation at Aspley somewhere. The tuff is all the same age and indications it formed very quickly, within days. And in others, there are small mud deposits between layers and some air deposited tuff, so it did happen at the same place at the same time, but it was one big event. Where it contacts the narrowly Fernvale schists, there is almost no sign of metamorphosis. So it may have been hot, but not for very long. We know it was hot, we know it was a thousand degrees C or it wouldn't have welded. 
So in summary, there was a really big bang somewhere near us. No, I won't play the clip again. And it deposited a thousand feet of red hot ash all over the place. Weathering and the essences of time worked upon a single rock. Oh, sorry, wrong script. Anyway, it's old. 250 million years or so. Are some 20 million years older than the Inogra granites. So this was here before they came. So anyone who tells you that the Brisbane tooth came from the Inogra granites is wrong. 20 million years is a long time. The rock which we now know as the Brisbane Tulk was first described by Leichhardt, who examined the rock on his visit to Brisbane in 1844. Forming the steep bank of the Brisbane River opposite the Government Gardens and between Petrie's Bight and New Farm, there occurs a rock of pale violet colour which furnishes an excellent building stone. Just a word on Ludwig Leichhardt. Les Hiddens, another legendary Australian, called him the Passionate Prussian. In 1848, Leichhardt set out from the Condamine River to reach the Swan River in Western Australia to cross Australia from east to west. The party was last seen on the 3rd of April 1848 at Alling McPherson Station on the Darling Downs. Gonski, never seen again. So come on, Les. Your nation needs you one more time. We need your Bush Tucker superpowers again. Get out and find this guy. Crowdfund it. I'd chip in a bob or two. Sorry, back to the rocks. Records indicate that it was Captain Patrick Logan. A brutal pig, by the way. Hated by his men and convicts alike. He was the commandant of the Morton Bay Penal Settlement, who first opened a quarry to supply stone to his building works as early as 1826. Those structures are still standing today, including the old win windmill. From 1842, the quarry was rented to a private stonemason, John Petrie, later the first mayor of Brisbane. To the north, there was the Windsor Town Quarry, which we now know as Windsor Park. This quarry supplied road-making materials for the colonial government in the 1860s and later to the newly established Windsor Shire Council. They also used rock from that quarry. Another quarry was established at Lyons Terrace, back towards the city, by building contractor John Carroll. It was mainly used to extract building stone. W.H. Bowser and Lever started quarrying at the Brisbane Hospital site around 1885 and in 1920 they opened the Windsor Quarry on the corner of Newmarket Road. In 1941 they also opened the Webster Road Somerset Hills Quarry which is now a very large retirement home. Took was also quarried at the Hamilton Woad Quarry over on Hamilton Road strangely enough. The Kedron Shire Quarry was also known as the Turner Road Quarry, and that was over at Stafford. It's now an awesome SES headquarters, and has a beautiful tough face there, but I just can't get in. The damn gates are always locked.
doing? Sir James, Catholic Archbishop of Brisbane. He was born on the 2nd of September 1871 in Killalia, near Broadford, Limerick in Ireland. Or Doohig the Builder, as he was his nickname. He built hundreds of new buildings for the church in his time, except for one big one, and we'll get to that. Benedict Stone is a mixture of Portland cement, crushed Brisbane tuff, and coloured with mineral powders, and it's used on building facades as an alternative to full stone construction. It was manufactured by the Benedict Stone Company of Queensland, which was established by the Roman Catholic Archbishop of Brisbane, James Doohick, to manufacture the stone required to use on his holy name cathedral in Fortitude Valley, a building you will notice is not there. The product was developed at the turn of the 20th century by an American manufacturer, James Benedict, of the Benedict Stone Company, USA, New York. Doohick obtained a license from the American company and opened the Benedict Stone Works at Bowen Hills on the 9th of August, 1929. His most ambitious project was the Cathedral of the Holy Name in the Fortitude Valley. This was going to be the largest cathedral in the Southern Hemisphere. But unfortunately, it was a casualty of the Great Depression. This destroyed the value of the investments that were there to finance the project, and the project stalled. When I was growing up, there was a rumour that some priest buggered off with the cash on the way to get it blessed in Rome. It was a popular story, but it was garbage. Duhigg also played a major role in the development of the University of Queensland, being a member of the University Senate from 1916 until his death in 1965. He established there an annual lecture, which is still given in his honour. The University recognised Duhigg's contribution by naming the Duhigg Library after him and awarding him an honorary degree of the Doctor of Law. Benedict Stone was nearly the cladding stone for the entire UK. It's a nice looking, it's cheap, and it was strong enough, but unfortunately, it's a bit porous and it soaks up water. So we got the beautiful Helden sandstone instead, and I'm glad we did, because it's awesome. In 1937, Duhigg successfully proposed that River Road, the road that went from Brisbane City to Tawong, should be renamed Coronation Drive, to celebrate the coronation of King George VI. Duhigg was appointed commander of the Order of St. Michael and St. John, CMG, you know, call me God, in 1954, in recognition of his service as the Roman Catholic Archbishop of Brisbane. He was then made a Knight Commander, KCMG, kindly call me God, of the Order in 1959, the recognition of more service as the Roman Catholic Archbishop of Queensland. So that's nice. What was that quote? Something like, it would be easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to the enter the kingdom of God? But I digress. Hey Geonodes, I've done a couple of quick flybys here just to give you an idea of flyovers. This is the quarry over at Somerset Hills. This was a tough quarry run by uh, Bowser and Lever and it operated for a long time. They took out a lot of stone. This is now a retirement village and this is fairly old imagery. It's actually completely built out now. That's Rody Road up the top there in Webster Road. But while we're here, we're just going to nip over to have a look at the Hamilton quarry which is also just on the edge of the Brisbane Tool. It's right in the middle of the screen there, there's a reservoir next to it, you'll see that green thing. That green stripe up there is Little Cabbage Tree Creek. And you'll see the rock face here, they really took some stone out of here. Uh, I've walked all over this hill, it's really good, I suggest you go and do it one day. Anyway, that's the Hamilton Quarry and the Somerset Hills Quarry. It's a nice place, you should go, wallabies everywhere too.
Oh, Geo Nerds, here we are up at Aspie, right on top of the Mud Springs, actually. That's uh, Cabbage Tree Creek going in front of us there. We're just going across Maundrill Terrace, heading over. We're right on top of the Tuff. We're following the Tuff through now, just going past where that Somerset Hills quarry was, heading in over the hills of Windsor, heading down through Bowen Hills. There's Bowen Hills Station. That's all cut straight into Tuff below us there now. Straight across the Story Bridge, that's all cut into Tuff. Along the Kangaroo Point Cliffs, we all know they're tough. And we follow it right through. It goes through Woolen Gabba. It's quite deep here. The Glen uh, Jones Tunnel is under there, and they were 200 feet down still in it. Dutton Park here, we're heading across. the. It turns here. It actually finishes just in front of us. And it comes across, and there's a little outcropping of it, which we've all seen in the UQ video. Hey Geo Nerds, it's the end of another video. I'm sorry this one's really long but I couldn't cut it short. There was too much interesting stuff and you keep going down rabbit holes and yeah, this is where we end up 18 minutes into the video. But anyway, next week, Aspley Volcanics. Looking forward to that. I know absolutely nothing about it. I've got a bit of a research too, but I'll be there. Don't worry about that. So anyway, have a great week and I'll hopefully I can catch you next week and uh, I heard some news the other day that uh, they were digging through some conglomerate and they found a can of soft drink in there. Apparently it was Coca-Cola Clastic. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this stuff, and hey, you made it this far. Please help us to poke the algorithm and smash that like button like it's Space 1999. And if you want to see more, subscribe and share this with, say, a thousand of your closest friends. And let's see just how far that little algorithm can go before its CPU explodes. Copy you later.